In this video, we're looking at why major uranium forecasts so often miss the real timing of when market tightens. Investors rely on supply-demand charts from the Red Book and the World Nuclear Association. They look comprehensive, but they don't actually describe how the uranium market works in practice. Once you understand the mismatches built into these forecasts, the picture becomes much clearer. Let's start with point number one. Point one is this. The supply forecasts from the Red Book and the World Nuclear Association are based on capability, not actual production. The Red Book, published by the IAEA and the OECD's Nuclear Energy Agency and the WNA's Fuel Report, both show global supply lines rising to meet demand in future years. But those lines represent what the industry could produce if everything goes as planned. In reality, uranium mines rarely meet their stated capacity. Across decades, delivered production has averaged only 70 to 84 percent of nameplate, and every year brings something unexpected. Ramp-ups that stall, ISR weld fields that underperform, underground issues, political delays, supply chain shortages. So when a forecast says supply will rise to a certain level, you can assume that the real number will be considerably lower. For investors, this means that the supply curve shown in these reports is almost always overstated, often as much as by 30%. The timing of the next uranium cycle is critical for investors. To understand more about when it will turn, you need our white paper behind the curve. Download it below in the description section. Point two is this. A portion of the forecasted supply stack doesn't represent actual uranium. It's simply a placeholder. Forecast tables often include categories like secondary supply, unspecified supply, future projects, or generic labels such as other. These may include things like underfeeding, which only appears when enrichment margins allow government stock releases, which are politically driven and unpredictable, trader inventory that may already be committed, new projects that aren't financed or permitted. On the page, these tons make the supply and demand lines meet, but in the real world, they may not materialize at all. For investors, the implication is simple. If you strip out hypothetical tons, the gap between true supply and demand widens significantly. Point three is this. Forecasts often compare mined uranium in one year to the demand from reactors in the same year, but these two things are not connected. U-308 that comes out of the ground does not go straight into a reactor. It goes through conversion, enrichment, and fabrication. That process takes 12 to 24 months. So when a forecast shows supply meeting or nearly meeting demand in a given year, it's comparing this year's mined uranium to this year's uranium consumption but the uranium consumed this year was mined one or two years ago. This timing mismatch makes the market look more balanced than it actually is. For investors, the key insight is that once mined supply is shifted to the year it becomes usable fuel, the supply-demand balance tightens earlier than most forecasts suggest. The demand side of these forecasts is often inflated in the near term because it includes reactors that aren't running. Most forecasts use the term operable reactors but operable simply means a unit could operate. It doesn't mean it is operating or consuming fuel. This matters because several countries have reactors waiting restarts, an extended outage, reactors technically maintained but not producing power. If a reactor isn't running, it's not burning fuel. But in many forecasts, it is still counted as part of annual demand. For investors, this means current and near-term demand in these charts is often slightly overstated. It makes the market appear more balanced than it truly is. And that misalignment compounds the errors on the supply side. Let's bring the four points together. Supply in these reports is based on capability, not actual production. A portion of the supply stack represents hypothetical or uncertain tons. Mined uranium doesn't become reactor fuel until a year or two after it's produced. And demand is often calculated using operable reactors rather than the units that are actually consuming fuel. Taken individually, each of these mismatches introduce a small distortion. Together, they create a supply-demand picture that looks more balanced and more distant than the real world. And these four points represent only some of the adjustments needed to understand when the uranium market actually turns. There are additional mismatches the forecasts don't account for, and once all of them are corrected, the timing of the shift becomes much more visible. If you'd like to see how these mismatches are corrected and how they change the timing of the market break, Download our white paper behind the curve, understanding when and how the uranium market turns. It provides the full framework behind the timing adjustments and the recognition phase that lies behind.